Okay, why don't you go ahead and open with prayer? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for everything that you brought into our lives. And we thank you for this wonderful pastor, Larry. And we pray for the offering. And we pray that this holy day and this holy Christmas would go well in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, now, how, how old are you? Ten. You're ten. All right. Just turned ten the other day, Sunday. Oh, you just turned ten. So you, this last week you were nine. Wow. You're, you're very mature for a, for a 10 year old. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So what, what is your favorite scripture? I, I brought a Bible for you because I, I brought you over here without you know, telling you what we were gonna do. Mm. So um, what's your favorite scripture? Ephesians 2.10. Uh, you wanna look that up and read it to us? Okay, Ephesians 2.10. Uh, let's see if we can put that up on the overhead, Ephesians Two ten. Oh my goodness. Galatians, it's right after Galatians, you know. Oh. All right. Galatians, Ephesians, chapter two. That's that's right after chapter one. Right here. <laughs> I love this young man. He's one of my favorites. Okay. Uh, go ahead and read it to us. It says, For we are God's for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Hmm. For we are his workmanship. Um, okay. So, yeah, there's, there's a monitor right back there, too. It usually has the scripture on it. The, uh, we are his workmanship. I wonder what that means. We are, we are, does that mean like he made us? Yeah. Yeah. He made us, huh? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, huh? I wonder what that means. Well, when we become a Christian, the Bible says we are in Christ and that he is in us. Now you knew that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, but I like this next part. It says, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You know, when it says God prepared beforehand, that's almost like God had a plan. He had a plan from the very beginning. He had a plan way back. And it reminded me of another scripture in Ephesians. Uh, let's go ahead and put it up. It's a real difficult scripture for most people. And when we read it, some people are, may just actually roll their eyes and go, oh my, I don't know what that means. But we're going to figure it out today, okay? You and me, we're going to figure it out. Uh, let's go to Ephesians, since you like that book so well, chapter 1. Let's go to chapter 1. And if we could put this scripture up on the overhead, Ephesians 1, 1. And I'll read here for just a minute, and then we'll get to the, we'll get to the part that we're really wanting to talk about. I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, you know, sometimes people wonder where these uh, names of these books come from, you know, like the book of Ephesians. Um, well, the Ephesians were the people who lived in Ephesus. It was, a, it was a city called Ephesus. And that's kind of like saying Americans live in America. So... Paul was writing a letter, and he was writing a letter to the people who were Christians who lived in the city of Ephesus, and they were the Ephesians. I had trouble saying that when I was your age. I would always say Ephesians or something like that. <laughs> My pastor kept saying it's Ephesians. You really don't care, do you? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Look, verse 2, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him, now look at the next part of that, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. 
Now, this confuses a lot of people because it says that God chose us in Jesus before the foundation of the world. That means before the world was ever created. You know, in the, in the first part of the Bible where it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. You know all about that. Who, who was the first man? Adam. Adam. Yeah, let's hold that right up there so everybody can hear you really good. Okay, so Adam was the first man. So it says here, before the world was even created, that, what's it say? That God chose us and Jesus to do something. Now, here's what confuses a lot of people. When it says that God chose us, they think that that means that they didn't have a choice. But everybody has a choice, don't they? Mm -hmm. we, can, we can choose whether to believe that Jesus is the Son of God or not believe it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if God chose us before everything was created, some people say, well, that means you don't have a choice. God's either chosen you or not chosen you. Now, this is going to sound complicated, but figure this one out. God knows what's going to happen before it even happens. But he knows what's going to happen without changing your ability to choose. So that means God knows what you're going to do before you do it, but he doesn't make you do it. That's interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's because God... He is not just now. He's in the future, and he's in the past all at the same time. So what does it mean when it said God chose us? Well, see, Bible kind of choosing is different than our kind of choosing, okay? Bible kind of choosing is, when, when it talks about God, uh, people get that confused. Mm -hmm. uh, they get into big words like predestination. Have you ever heard that word before? Predestination means that you don't have any choice in what you do. It's all planned out, and what's going to happen is going to happen. Before it happens. Before it happens, exactly. So, for example, they say, I was predestined to become a Christian, so nothing I do matters. Or I'm predestined to not be a Christian. Well, that's not what that means. See, here's, here's the way it works. God, do you remember the scripture, John 3.16? Mm -hmm. do, do you know it by heart? Go, go ahead and say it. For God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Okay. So God loved us so much that he sent his son that whoever would believe in him wouldn't perish but have everlasting life. So if we believe in him, see, once we say, I believe in him, then God chooses us to have everlasting life. If we don't believe in him, he doesn't choose us to have everlasting life. So that's kind of the way it works. It sounds, sometimes people make things more complicated than they really are. You know, The reality is God knew what was going to happen even before it happened. I've heard people say, well, why did God create the devil? Well, I remember my granddaughters asking me when they were real little. They were, you know, younger than you even. <laughs> they, they asked me questions. They'd say, why did God create the devil? Because the devil's bad. And if God made everything, he, that means he made the devil. Well, but here's the thing. When he made the devil, the devil wasn't the devil. He was Lucifer. He was Lucifer. You're exactly right. He was a beautiful angel in heaven. Uh, the Bible talks about how beautiful he was. He had uh, uh, different colors of jewels within him. He even had musical instruments inside of him somehow, timbrels. And, like your dad, he plays the drums over there. Michael, he plays the drums. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he doesn't play the drums anything probably like Lucifer did. I mean, he was the <laughs> master musician of all kind, you know. But, but your dad's good. Don't yeah. you tell him I didn't say he was good. Got it. Okay. But, uh, but Lucifer had something within him that God gave all of his creation. 
And that's the ability to choose. And the Bible says that what we do has results. You know, the scripture says about give and it will be given unto you. Do you know that scripture? Well, I heard of it, but not really. Okay. It's give and it will be given unto you. And it says in the same measure you give, that's how you receive. It's not just talking about money, London. It's, it's talking about other things, too. Like if, uh, if, you, if, you want to, uh, if you want to have a friend, you've got to be friendly. Mm-hmm. If you want forgiveness, you have to give forgiveness. And uh, do you have any brothers and sisters? Um, four. Four? Uh, three. I have two sisters and three brothers. Do you ever have to forgive them for anything? Berlin mostly. Huh? Berlin mostly. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the devil decided he was going to completely, Lucifer decided he was going to completely do exactly the opposite of what God wanted him to do. And that doesn't work out too well with God. So, he got kicked out of heaven, mm-hmm. and uh, he was cast down to the earth, right right here on the earth. Mm-hmm. And then God did something. Now, keep in mind, God had a plan from the very beginning. Now, God doesn't always tell us everything. You know, he, he tells us what we need to know. Yeah. Kind of like your parents, you know, they, they tell you what you need to know. Yeah. So... Uh, God's plan was to create somebody that was just like him in a lot of ways. Looked like him and act like, acted like him. Mm-hmm. And so he created man, Adam and Eve. It says he created them in his image and in his likeness. That means the image means that they looked like him and the likeness means they acted like him. So he created them and he put them in a garden beautiful place and he told him to take care of it and he told him to guard it and uh, Lucifer who was kicked out of heaven he went into the garden and he talked to Eve did you ever hear anything about that yeah what, what, what do you know about that um in Ephesians um no, Genesis it um, says the snake tried to like convince her to eat the fruit from the tree that God said not to eat that's exactly right. God s- said, don't eat. And he, there's some details there, but he said, don't eat of this fruit. You know, from there's a couple trees there that they were supposed to mess with. And somehow the serpent, Lucifer, mm-hmm. he convinced Eve that uh, she should eat of that fruit, whatever mm-hmm. it was. Yeah. And then she took it to Adam. And he ate. And that's exactly the opposite of what God told him to do. You know, God told Lucifer not to do certain things, and he did it. And he got kicked out of heaven. And he told Adam not to do certain things, and he did it. And he got kicked out of the garden. But see, keep, remember, God created Adam so that he could fellowship with him. Now, Lucifer was not created to look like or to act like God. He wasn't. But Adam was created in the likeness of God. Mm -hmm. So God made a plan. And he see, because he knows what's going to happen in the future, even though he doesn't change things, he knows what's going to happen in the future. Because of that, he made a plan back before any of this happened. And that's what we were reading about just a moment ago. It says he chose him. In verse 4, before the foundation of the world, before the world was even created, God knew he was going to have to send his son, Jesus. Yeah. So, um, when he sent Jesus to the earth, how did he do that? That I don't know. Is that what Christmas is about? About the birth of Jesus? Mm Mm-hmm. So, God sent his son, and his son was born on this earth as a man. And uh, part of the reason he had to be born as a man is because Adam was a man, and Adam was the one that messed up. And so it took the 
sacrifice of a man to turn everything around. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus did. Yep. He came to earth and he was born as a man. Boy, this, it sounds complicated through all this, but let's, let's read some more of this, okay? It says, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us acceptable, accepted in the beloved. See, because Jesus came to earth and was born, and then because he gave up his life for us, he made us accepted. So we were kind of like kicked out of the garden, but now we've got an opportunity to get back in the garden, so to speak. You know? Yeah. And, but what we've got to do is, is that scripture that you read just a moment ago kind of tells it all, John 3.16. Go ahead and say that again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. See, so God sent Jesus so that Jesus could make a way that whoever believed in him would not perish. That would not perish. That means like, excuse me, but like go to hell. It's not a good place. You know, there's some people, some churches, some preachers even, they talk about hell is not really a place. But uh, Jesus said it was. Jesus said there's a heaven and there's a hell. And uh, the reason we want people to become Christians, the reason we want people to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior is because of what you just said. Whoever believes in him should not perish. They won't go to hell. But they would have eternal, everlasting, everlasting life. So... Let me ask you a question. What's better, everlasting life or everlasting death? I would go with the first one. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. Look at verse 7. In him, in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he prepared, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. Now that sounds complicated, but here's what's going to happen. Way off in the future, at some point in time, and it may not be all that far away, but at some point in time, Jesus is coming back. Mm -hmm. And he's coming back. That's the rapture of the church. He's coming back. And the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise. Then we who are alive will be caught up. Mm -hmm. And we'll be with him. And that's what it's talking about right here. It says he's going to gather everything that's in him. Now what's interesting here is it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Now that means Messiah, mm -hmm. the anointed one. Yep. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. You know, there's, there's Christians who have died. You're, you're pretty young, you know. How, how old again are you? Ten. Ten. Do you know of anyone who has, has died? Have you ever had anybody in your family die? Or? Um, my grandfather, my great-grandfather. Your great-grandfather, he died? Okay. Uh, he was a Christian, of course. I don't know. You don't know? I, well, your, your family told me that he was. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> that, that's good to know, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, he, he's in heaven right now. So, and you're not. Oh, uh, but, but here's the thing. There's going to be a time when Jesus is going to gather together all who are in heaven and on earth, and we're going to be together with him. That, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Did you ever meet your grandfather? Yep. Uh, really? Mm -hmm. Did he spank you? No. Okay. <laughs> Should he have spanked you? I don't know. All right. Which, by the way, uh, what are you wanting for Christmas this year? Uh, a trumpet. A trumpet. 
did that inspire you a little bit ago when he played that? Uh, um, what was it? A euphonia? Euphonium. No, I always wanted, <laughs> <It didn't. laughs> I always wanted to play a trumpet because I knew um, when I get to sixth grade, I could play in band, and I always wanted to learn how to play a trumpet, and I knew it would be a great experience. Oh. Now, Jim back there, he plays the trumpet. Can you see him? There's a lot of lights back there. There's a lot of stage lights. Yeah. See the guy way back there in the sound booth? Yeah, wave at him. Uh, he, he plays the trumpet. He's pretty good. He plays in an orchestra. Yeah. Well, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. <laughs> so so he's, he's a big deal. All right, yeah. That's why his son can play the euphonium so well. Because <laughs> his dad inspired him. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's look at verse 11. In him we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him. Now, once again, that predestined doesn't mean you don't have a choice. That means because you chose him, he has chosen certain things for you. You know, uh, that's kind of like, let, let's, let's think of it this way. Uh, let's say your mom, is she back here someplace? Oh, there she is. I see a hand over there. Uh, let, let's say your mom says, London, if you clean up your room, I'm going to take and I'm going to get, what do you like to eat? Do you like ice cream? Uh, Chinese food. You're the strangest 10-year-old I've ever met. <laughs> okay, so you like Chinese food. Yeah. Let, let, let's, let's, say, let's say your mom says, let's say your mom says, uh, you clean up your room and I'll take you and I'll get you some Chinese food. <laughs> now here's the whole thing. She has predetermined and predestined and set the set everything in motion for you to go have some Chinese food. Do you use chopsticks? You don't? Okay. Now here's the thing. You still have a choice of whether you're going to clean up your room or not. But if you clean it up, then it's all predestined and predetermined for you to have Chinese food. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is with Jesus. He has predestined for us to be to heaven. If we receive him, it's all set, it's all ready to go, it's predetermined. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I know you're born again, you're saved. Yep. How old were you when you were saved? Do you remember? It was quite some time Probably ago. Probably six or seven. Six or seven? Yeah. Worked out pretty good, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, have you decided what you're going to be when you grow up? Well, two things. Two things. Or three. Don't know, really. Okay. I'm deciding between different science things I want to do, and then I know I still want to be a pastor like you. Oh, you want to be a pastor, too. Okay. Well, you really know a lot of Scripture. Yeah. You really do. Okay. In him we have obtained an inheritance. Oh, what are the other things besides a pastor? What? Uh, I want to be a chemist. A chemist? Okay, now, my son-in-law over there. Wave your hand, Chris. Wave your hand. He is a chemist. Actually, his title is, he is a senior scientist for the Department of Defense. Wow. It's a big deal. He's Bigger a big deal. deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. <laughs> Don't make too much of it. Got it. Okay. Uh, but uh, he, he's a chemist. He's a chemist, and uh, he's pretty, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And then, okay, a chemist and a pastor, and what was the other thing you're thinking about? And a meteorologist. A meteorologist. Does it mean like a weather person? That's interesting. Did you know that when Loretta and I were first married, Channel 17 up in Columbia, the guy who was uh, head of that was a good friend of mine, and they wanted Loretta to come up and be the weather girl. Okay. In him, who we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined, predetermined, yep. according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. 
that we who were first, what? We who were first, what? Trusted. Trusted. Mm. In Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Wow. Look at verse 13. Can you read verse 13? Mm -hmm. go, ahead, go ahead and read that. And him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Wow. See, here's something that, uh, and I'm going to be real quick on this, okay? But there's a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking, yeah, right. <laughs> See, there's a lot of people that think that it, once you become a Christian, if you do something wrong uh, and you die before you get to ask forgiveness or whatever, that you might not go to heaven. Or there's people who believe that once you get saved, you have to do certain kind of works to stay saved. Well, yes, we have to do works in order to be holy, but it tells us here that once we have, having believed, that we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. There's another place in the Bible where it says, we are sealed until the day of redemption. So once we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we may backslide. We may not do what we should do. We, we may not even get much rewards in heaven. But once we receive Jesus and we truly believe in our heart, I mean, once you truly believe in your heart, nothing can change that. Yep. So, so you're okay as far as getting to heaven. But if you want to have rewards in heaven, do you want rewards? Of course. Of course. See, now that's the right answer, of course. He didn't do that, aw, shucks, I don't need anything. No, you want rewards. Because if Jesus has made something special for London, it's going to be pretty cool. Wow. I wonder if they have video games in heaven. If they do, I bet they're magnificent, three-dimensional. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> okay, verse, go ahead and read verse 14. Who is guaranteed of our inheritance until redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory? Okay, now, we're going we're gonna to end with one more scripture, all right? But I want you to turn in your Bible over to 1 Peter. Chapter 1. No, it's back the other direction. Okay, 1 Peter chapter 1. And let's take a look at verse 20. Oh, maybe I'd better look it up too, huh? <laughs> yeah. 1 Peter, that's just, just before 2 Peter. 1 Peter. Where was it again? 1 uh, Peter chapter 1. Verse found it. 20. Don't tell me you found it before me. Yep. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and read it. Got it. He indeed was foreordained. Foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was the magnificent. He was manifest. That means he showed manifest up. Manifest in these last times for you. Wow. Now see right there, he was foreordained. It's all before the world was created. Before the world was created, Jesus was foreordained before the foundation of the world. But he showed up in these last times for you. Yep. And me. Mm -hmm. And all of those people out there. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. They are. They are beautiful people. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we're going to go ahead and stop there. Um, if somebody has lived their life, but they, they haven't really become a Christian, you know, they, they haven't become a Christian, um, how would they become a Christian? Do you know? Or Question that I want to find out, but don't know right now. Okay. The way, the way they would become a Christian is, is they would, the Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you believe that God raised him from the dead 
and you say that, you confess that, then you're saved. And you go to heaven. And the obvious question that a lot of people ask is, are you serious? Is it that simple? Certainly there's going to be more to it than that. Well, there is more to it than that. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, is Jesus did it all. <laughs> everything, everything that needs to be done, he did. You know, I know your teachers over there in Super Kid Academy. You've got amazing teachers. Yeah. Do you like them? All right. Um, and I know what they teach you, and they teach you to believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And that when Jesus died on the cross, that he didn't stay dead. He rose again. He arose again. On God, the third day. God raised, on the third day, you're exactly right. God raised him from the dead. And you believe that, and you're not afraid to say it, like you just did. Mm -hmm. That means you're saved. Yeah. And everything else, Jesus did it. You know, the Bible says, uh, by grace we've been saved through faith. That means God's power and us believing in him. And not by works. In other words, it's not by anything that we have done. Because if we could get saved because of what we did, we'd brag about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. See? So, if anybody's watching out there or anybody's in this group right here and they want to get saved, all they got to do is just repeat after me and, and uh, I'll say my part and you say the repeat part, okay? But if they say this and they believe it in their heart, they're saved. Wow, pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Awesome and cool. Yeah, I love you, London. You're just an amazing young man. All right. So if you want to become a Christian and you're not a Christian, here's what you do. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I receive Jesus. I receive Jesus. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. I believe he's your son. I believe he's your son. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he died for my sins. And I believe you raised him from the dead. I believe you raised him from the dead. I will never deny that I'm a Christian. I'll never deny that I'm a Christian. I ask that you forgive me. I'll ask you forgive me. And I thank you for forgiving me. And I thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, thanks for being with me today. Anytime. Anytime. All right. And uh, I think what we need to do is tell the people that there's ministers in the lighthouse. If you would like to have someone pray with you about special need today, if you'd like to be anointed with oil for your healing, if, uh, if you just need somebody to hug you and tell you God loves you, stop by the lighthouse. We're there for you. And uh, for everyone else, they can have some hot chocolate yeah. and listen to the Christmas caroling. I think we'd like for the Christmas carolers to leave now. And I think I'll be the ones for the hugs. You do what? I think I'll be the ones for the hugs. You want people to hug each other? Is that what you, you want to tell people to hug each other? Mm-hmm. And okay. be loved. That's what Christmas is all about. Love, Jesus. Christmas is all about love and Jesus. Yep. Giving. Giving. And him coming back. And him coming back for us, huh? Wow. That's what I know in my heart. You really love Jesus, don't you? Yep. Hmm. You ever pray at home? You do? I pray every morning, every night. And when I get to school, and especially when I eat. <laughs> especially when you eat? Yep. I tell you what, if you eat at McDonald's, you need to pray before you eat. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Same there at Wendy's. Yeah, same, same at Wendy's. <laughs> you, you have experience in that, don't you? Yep. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any special, while well, the Christmas carolers are getting ready and they're pouring the hot chocolate over there, do you have any special words of wisdom for the... All these people that oh, are yeah. at something Oh, I just learned, look at them and tell them. Something I learned in my lifetime is if you have something you really like to do, don't let fear get in the way of it. 